Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is fantastic and maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something that I've been asking myself. And I got the answer yesterday. Who is behind the push for Mount Kenya to form or to join their own political party ahead of the 2027 general election? Because for those who have been following the politics of this country, the push for Mount Kenya-based political party is actually gaining momentum each and every single day. But who is behind that push? I got the answer to that question yesterday. Yesterday, the member of parliament for Embakasi North, Honorable James Gakuya, was on Kameme FM. And Honorable Gakuya stated a lot of things. But three things caught my attention. Let me just remind you of the three things. The first thing was that he castigated Johnson Sakaja for awarding Oscar Sudi garbage collection tender worth over 300 million Kenyan shillings, while the Kikuyus who voted for Sakaja and William Ruto are suffering. The intention behind that was to expose the suffering or the betrayal of the Kikuyus who voted for William Ruto and Johnson Sakaja. The second thing he stated was that they will never allow the creation of three deputy party leaders in UDA party. Again, that's significant because there is push to create three additional positions, two additional positions, sorry, of the deputy party leaders so that they become three. The idea behind that is to reduce the influence of Rigadi Gashagwa. And the third thing that caught my attention, which is actually forming the basis of this analysis, was his advice to the Kikuyu nation to form their own political party so that they can recapture the Nairobi gubernatorial seat. The truth of the matter is that the push to form another political party for Mount Kenya is not only for Nairobi, but probably for 2032. And the question is, who is behind that push? My answer to that is that the person behind that push is none other than the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. Why the Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa? James Gakuya is a close ally of Rigadi Gashagwa. And the fact that he went to Kameme FM simply confirms that they wanted to send a message. And there is no way Gakuya could go ahead and make those serious allegations and, and advice without prior approval of the deputy president. There is no way. So I want to conclude that the person who is behind the push for Mount Kenya-based political party is Rigadi Gashagwa. Remember, Gakuya is actually on the verge of becoming the chairperson of UDA party for Nairobi County. He's actually being fronted by none other than Rigadi Gashagwa to fight or to stop the governor, Governor Johnson Sakaja. So in this video, I want us to dissect why Rigadi Gashagwa, if indeed he's behind it, would attempt to create Mount Kenya-based political party. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. Why would Rigadi Gashagwa, the deputy president, push for the formation of a Mount Kenya-based political party when we all know that it is Rigadi Gashagwa who stopped Uhuru Kenyatta's party, which was going to be Kikuyu-based political party, Jubilee Party, in 2022. Why would, they, why would they then push for formation of their own political party? The truth is they're doing that because, number one, 
political betrayal. Only someone who is not thinking will sleep so well in the night as a politician that he won't be betrayed. If Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto could betray each other, these are men and these are gentlemen who would put on similar shirts, similar ties, similar shoes, similar shoes when they are addressing the media. If they could betray each other, what do you think will stop William Samuel Arab Ruto from being betrayed? Remember, Rigedi Gashagwa is not your ordinary politician. This is a former deal who worked very closely with Moi. He worked with Uhuru Kenyatta. He's now the deputy president. So you might have read the signs on the wall that this likelihood of betrayal. So that's number one. Number two, there is also the fear of Musalia Mundavadi factor in Kenya Kwanza. That's why Gakuya in his statement was very clear that they will never allow the formation or the creation of two additional deputy party leaders. And indeed, when William Ruto appointed Clofas Malala as the Secretary General of UDA party, there's something he wanted to achieve. And again, Rigedi Gashagwa ally, the governor for Nyeri, Mutai Kahiga, was bold enough to relay Rigedi Gashagwa's message. But I'm very, very uncomfortable with the people who never voted for Dr. William Ruto now coming and purporting to be people who should stand for, start, be telling, like for example, I have said it again and I'll repeat, I am very uncomfortable with the position of, of uh, Secretary, um, I mean Secretary General of the UDA party, going to one Muheshimua Cleo Ma Ma Malala. I want to be told what votes he is bringing to the table. Western, and this is a fact, belongs to two parties, Ford Kenya for Bungoma and, UD, um, and, uh, and, uh, and ODM for the rest, Vihiga and Kakamega. The total combined was 600,000 votes. While we thank them for that number of votes, they were only pouring the 600 into 3 million that we gave and 1.5 that came from Rift Valley. Even if Mwalimuangu Wam Number three is the value of Mount Kenya votes. <laughs> you know, Mount Kenya delivered the presidency to William Ruto. I know you can argue that William Ruto became the president because of the votes from Sijui Papawa Roma, the Speaker of the National Assembly, Bungoma County. Bungoma gave William Ruto 200,000 votes. Bungoma. Okay? Mount Kenya gave William Ruto 3 point something million votes. <laughs> In fact, the votes from Bungoma, only one constituency will cancel it from the mountain. And the way they've been mistreated, and it's, it's going to actually explode soon, the way they've been mistreated, there's a strong feeling that the vote from the mountain is being taken for granted. And that the real value of Mount Kenya votes is not counting. And they give the case of Moses Masika Wetangula and even Musalia Mudavadi. That despite the toll, having some small parties with very few members of parliament, they were able to negotiate and they can point out what they got. So they want to ensure that in the next election, their vote will count. So that if they want Nairobi, instead of sponsoring someone, they'll be told, okay, 
Now, you guys appoint your man. This is the, the, the arrangement we are going to have several of these kind of ministers. As Mount Kenya, because in the last election, William Ruth just wanted to win Nairobi for his politics. And I also think that he was not even sure that he would win Nairobi. <laughs> Number three is the 2032 politics. Rikendi Gashagwa is keen on 2032 politics. Let me just take you through some facts which are now stubborn about Rikendi Gashagwa. The first fact is that Rigedi Gashagwa is currently rebranding. If you look at his dressing code, has changed. His speech is now appealing and on point. Rigedi Gashagwa is no longer articulating government policies before William Ruto. In fact, his speeches, if you've been studying him of late, very short, brief, and to the point. And Rigedi Gashagwa is now trying to appeal nationally. Unlike before, when Rigadi Gashagwa was just appearing as the leader of the Kikuyu nation. So that's the first fact, which means Rigadi is keen on 2032. And of course, he knows that even if William Ruto were to pick him as the running mate in 2027, that is not guaranteed that in 2032 he will be endorsed. So he's rebranding. The second fact about Rigadi Gashago, which you must also accept, is that Rigadi Gashago is currently consolidating the mountain. Which begs the question, why is Rigadi Gashago consolidating the mountain? Because if you ask me, the mountain is firmly behind UDA party. Why would it then attempt to consolidate Mount Kenya as Rigadi Gashago? Because if there is one thing that William Ruto cannot allow, is for someone to emerge as the leader in Mount Kenya. That's why the encounter yesterday where Rigadi Gashagwa was supposed to attend an event, then Dindi Nyoro's allies went ahead of him. You know, you expect a deputy president to attend an event. You popularize the event. People are seated. You know, the deputy president is arriving at noon. You go there by 11. You address the people there you sell the, 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 the story about the opponent who is in Dinyoro. Then when you hear he has boarded the plane, you take off. So it means he's consolidating the mountain, but someone somewhere is actually out to frustrate him. He's doing that because he knows that in case of a betrayal, he will go to the mountain as Rigadi Gashagwa. Because William Ruto wants a, a situation where if you want to go to Mount Kenya, if he wants to go to the mountain, he doesn't need to go through Rigadi. He doesn't need to go through Moses Korea. He doesn't need to go through any other person. He want to go to the mountain as William Ruto. And indeed, if you were to ask me, most of the people who are elected in the last election in the mountain was as a result of William Ruto's effort. So the fact that Rigadi Gashago is not trying to consolidate the mountain under his grip means that he's planning something. The fourth fact that you can also not run away from is that there are some people in Kenya Kwanza or in UDA who are not comfortable with Rigadi Gashagwa. And because of that, Rigadi Gashagwa is planning to have this party. Just in case there's a problem with UDA party, just in case there's a problem in Kenya Kwanza, he will have a political party to use as a vehicle for 2032 politics. And lastly, political negotiations. You see, if Mount Kenya were to have their own political party, let's say Rigadi Gashagwa with his party Sisi Kwa Sisi with 50 members of parliament, he can use that party to negotiate with anybody because they have the numbers, they can negotiate for Nairobi, they have the numbers, they can use that numbers to negotiate for political seats at the national level and of course with that party they can even negotiate how to share for example, Nairobi. To say they agree with ODM, that okay. ODM to Tawache easy. It's easy. Hibi. That's how politics is played. I don't know what you think. But unless something else happens, I'm 100% convinced that the person who is behind the push for Mount Kenya-based political party is none 
other than Rigadi Kashagwa. I don't know what you think. Let me hear your points. Let me hear your thoughts. Thank you and we have a good day. Bye bye.